So in the last video, we covered modular JS with the object literal pattern. So once again, that's that's called a design pattern. That's kind of a way that you code. And once again, that was an object literal. And again, that's just making an object. People equals an object. And objects have properties, uh, name, and then say name. Uh, alerts will. There we go. And so one of the things that we don't like, let's say we had set name and whenever the name got set, we wanted to render the method. So we had some rule that whenever this dot name equals a new name, whenever this dot name equals a new name, we always want it to render at the same time. So it's really bad if someone who doesn't, maybe, maybe you're providing a library to be used as a third party piece of software, people shouldn't have access to this because you never want them to just automatically change people.name and just go, oh, I don't know what that's all about. You never want them to go people.name equals Bob uh, because then it's not gonna render. Bob is now just changed, but nothing happens. So they don't know how your program works. They should only have access to say, say name and set name. They shouldn't be able to change this. Um, and so, this is not necessarily always the pattern that you want to use. There's also what's called a revealing module pattern. So in this case, instead of being an object, it's actually a self-executing anonymous function. And so for those of you guys who are concerned or may have seen this before and, and don't quite understand what that means, I know I used this for I'd say a year when I started JavaScript, but I never really understood exactly how it did what it did or what it was. So let me take a slight little tangent and show you. Um, I can go where a equals one, and then I can go a dot to string, and that's gonna give me the string representation of my number one, so that works. But I cannot go one dot to string. That's gonna fail because one is still just a number at this point. It has not been evaluated. When you say where a equals one, one gets evaluated, it says, oh, okay, that's a number type. It actually gets converted into a number type, and number types have methods. I can go a dot, See, it's got to fixed, to string, to precision. It's got all these methods to it. Um, now I can do this. I can do in parentheses one dot two string. And so when you put it in the parentheses, it forces JavaScript to evaluate it first um, and then treat it as the evaluated thing. So this is basically doing the same thing. It's just not getting assigned to a variable. So this is going to work and I'm gonna get one. So same thing applies to a function. I can create a function here, say alert. Um, but I can't run it. I can't run it right away because it's not been evaluated. Uh, I can, however, wrap it in parentheses and now it gets evaluated and it's a function and then I can execute it and it alerts. So that's basically all we're doing. We're just writing out a function. We're wrapping it in parentheses here so that way it gets evaluated and then we can execute it right away. We can even pass it variables. I could say will and then up here I could receive a name. Do something with my name in here. Uh, so that's kind of cool. We can actually pass this brand new function some variables. So that's what that is if you're a little newer to that and you're not exactly sure what's going on. Um, and another cool thing happens is we create our own scope. So I could go over name in here equals will um, and nobody outside of my function can access that. I can't alert name. This will fail uh, because it's within the scope of this function. It's not a global variable. I could even have if I did var name equals Bob up here, then alerting name would alert Bob. Even if I've already run this, because var name inside of this function is will, var name out here globally is Bob. So what that gives us the ability to do is create what are called private variables. Uh, variables that only exist in our scope here, any function inside of here can access it. So if I have a function that says say name, uh, let's go function say name, equal, uh, what am I doing? And that'll alert name. Well, that's going to have access to will, so that'll alert will. Um, and right now, if I run this, this function is not returning anything, so people won't have a value. Uh, but what I can do is I can return an object, and that could have a value of, say, name, and then I just have to pass, I don't know, say name. So I'm passing say name in as say name. So I could also say, I could call this say your name, and it's still just gonna fire your say name. Um, so let's go ahead and do this. Let me copy this. Let's just paste this straight in. 
There we go, there's my object literal. And that's going to alert name. Why did that do that? Yeah, because I don't want you. Go away. Let's just copy this in straight into my console. And now I can go people. Let's look at what people is. People is an object and it's got one thing on it. I can run say name. So I can go people dot say name. And that's going to alert will. I cannot go people dot name equals will. Change that to Bob. It's going to say, uh, well, it's going to set it. Uh, it's going to set it. So now name equals Bob, but that's not the same as a variable. That just added Bob onto this object, which doesn't do anything. So name is still private. Name is still accessible. If I run people.say name again, it still says will. Awesome. So will is really untouchable. The only thing that can touch it is the function that I allow to be exposed. So this is the revealing module pattern. So let's kind of show you this people adder in a revealing module pattern. I went ahead and coded it out for you. Um, ver people equals this function. So with inside of this function, I can now kind of do much more of that vanilla JavaScript kind of style. I don't have to do all the this. I don't have to do all the methods uh, that you saw previously. I can go ver people equals this. And then I also don't need an init function. This is my init function. So it's automatically going to do anything I want it to do. This executes right away. So I just want to maybe add a comment to, to kind of add my own separation of concerns here. Let's cache the DOM. Let's bind some events. And then let's render. And then I'm going to create all my methods here. And then I'm going to expose the ones that I want to expose out into people. So you notice I have three functions. I have render. I have add person, I have delete person, uh, but I'm not exposing render out. I'm just exposing add person, delete person. So let's go ahead and save this. Let's restart this. What did I call that? I called it people. Okay, still people. So people, let's see what I got. I've got add person and I've got delete person. All right, pretty cool. Um, so let's go ahead and do add person again. Let's let's do that thing. There was one problem I had before. So let's say I have value. And let's say the name equals if value is type of string. Let's uh let's do it like this. If I passed in a string then I want to use value as the name. Otherwise, I'm gonna get it out of the input. The reason I have to do this is this is gonna be an event. If you click this button right here, then it's going to listen to the button click and it's gonna call add person. And there's gonna be that click event right here. So I don't always wanna use the value. I only wanna use the value as the name if, the str if, a, if a string was passed in. Because if it's a JavaScript event, then that's gonna be an object. If it came from up here, if I'm firing add person from up here, this will be an object. So I don't always want to use that. I only want to use that if it's a string. So if I passed in a string, then we'll use that as the name. Uh, we'll use value. Otherwise, we'll actually get the value out of the input. Um, and then we'll just push name. There we go. So now my API, I should be able to go people.addPerson test. There you go. Now I can add a person all I want. I should be able to add a person here as well. Excellent. So I should also be able to go people.delete person, except for I don't know how to delete a person. So let's just say that's an event. Um, if event, let's do the let's do this. Go var i if event type of event equals a number. If it's a number, then i equals event. Else, we have to get that i by doing the index. Let's hope you watched the last video or you have no idea what's going on. There we go, then we're gonna splice it out and we're gonna remove it. So that's what's gonna go on there. That should work as well. So now I should have a public method for delete person. Let's delete person one. Nice, Steve is gone. Let's see if this one still works. Will is gone, excellent. So I should be able to add some people. Let's add test, add test two. Let's delete person one, let's delete person zero. 
Excellent. So now we kind of have this API going on. We can't control the rendering. We can't mess with this people array, but we do have control over exposing an add person and a delete person function. Uh, what's kind of cool is we can keep these internal methods, whatever we want to call them. Here's a very common thing is if something's private, if it's internal, you'll see an underscore there. So let me go find everywhere that render is called um, and give it an underscore. Underscore usually means it's private. We're, we're storing this internally. We're never exposing it. Uh, so that's kind of an, uh, an indicator that this is not ever going anywhere. We use it. And then these are the ones that actually get used out. That'll still work. Make sure I didn't blow anything up. Yep, we're good. So I'll just uh, put the code up there in CodePen and let you look at this. And that's a revealing module pattern. And so then if we have some other module, that other module can consume it as an API. It can talk to person.addPerson person.delete person, and it can't blow anything up. It's a safe module.